Creating opportunities for themselves. They're going to have to do a lot more than that here. They're really going to have to step it up. Good smoke and a good follow-up Molotov. But Seized is still the one to open up on Sean. They're in the bomb sign and they're probably going to get the bomb down. But after that, they still have to hold it. And that's going to be a big problem here. Shazam charging up. A look at Navi coming right behind him. Guardian doing a lot of damage but not picking up the kill yet. There's Seized with one shot. Guardian headshot on Freakasoid. He only took one guy with him. So now Shazam and Rix are left. And it's a two on three. But look at the health on Flamey and Guardian. And they're still going to win the round. Oh my god, that could have actually gone Echo Fox way, but in the end, it will be Na'Vi, and that could very well be the start, the start of a landslide that they just cannot stop. Unbelievable, unbelievable. A, the start, the brutality of that shot from Seized on Sean Garris. You're just like, get out, you're in the sewers, perfect. You just saved me the time of dumping your body here later. And then the quick rotation coming out from Na'Vi, all that pressure onto Short, it was just this long 30 second long battle basically between Echo Fox and Navi just Navi not wasting any time at all showing no respect to Echo Fox they just wanted to take the fight to him and crush him out of the server it's gonna put Echo Fox in a weird position but they are not gonna be buying too much in this round some upgraded pistols in fact they're all upgraded their pistols but um, not any armor because they did get the bomb plant nice smooth ride for Shazam I kind of like that just almost uh, skating off the the ramp there and now quick control of restrooms Seuss is on the other side might have heard them run so it might be giving some information out and Guardian certainly gonna confirm either way that they're all coming this way and Edward with some uh, good clicks here coming in oh actually gonna go down Roker seems to be on point still with the Eagle but uh, Navi gonna win the round regardless yeah a little scary there Guardian looking a little shaky on his aim here in the pistol round also he had he took him quite a bit of time before he could dispatch someone and this one you know looked a little dicey there was a Sean at the end but still Nice work from now from Edward. He continues to show good form that he that's carrying over from Nuke. And well, it's a two-zero lead here for Navi. Pretty much the expected result after losing the pistol, obviously for Echo Fox. And now the rifle buy. No AWP for Shazam. That's a little unfortunate because he's shown to be fairly competent on the map with the sniper rifle. But they have AKs across the board, apart from Sean, who's going for the Galil just to have that smoke, just so we can have an extra smoke. So opening up some tactical options, perhaps. Yeah, and you, you definitely need that. Uh, whether you're going to hit A or B, without smokes, it's, it's almost certainly going to fail. So, let's see. Roka right now is covering the back line. He's very far back indeed. While the rest of Echo Fox, as you could tell, also actually incredibly defensive. They're waiting for Navi to disrespect them, basically. That's all Echo Fox are doing right now. They're like, we know that you think that you're the better team on this map and that you're going to just be able to go up against us in duels and win hands down. So, you know, we're actually going to wait for you to come to us. Guardian will eventually dispatch Freakazoid, but Shazam is there for the trade kill, so good team play coming in from Echo Fox. But Navi, it's still a four-on-four -four scenario here. And Edward, he's got a bit of a cheeky spot. With the help of Zeus, they're holding on to Connector. And so there is going to be a fight here momentarily. Spraying and missing initially, but pretty good follow-up and Edward also picking up a kill, making it a double, stealing the AK and running away, which he should at this point in time. It's just Rick's left, and he's actually going to be able to hear Flamey coming up. It looks should have been an easy kill there. Don't know what just happened. With an MP9, no less. So that's insult to injury. But that's where you just like kind of count on Edward. He's hitting so many shots right now that you just know when he's in that situation, he gets the first kill. That's easy enough. Guys looking the wrong way, right? But then he just steps in and wins the duel hands down versus Roka. That's the turning point in the round. Echo Fox, they had a chance. If they could have eliminated Edward there, they had a chance. It would have been a two-on-two, -two, and they could have made something happen from that. But instead, Edward continues to stand strong for Na'Vi. 3-0 lead now for Na'Vi. That's going to feel real good. And again, we, I mean... I think as soon as we saw this map pick, and I think Duncan was pointing it out as well, it's one of those picks that just looks so obvious for Na'Vi, you know, yeah, we'll just take this map and, and probably make it work. Bit of a misstep for Guardian, not looking too pretty there, but um, still. He's looking surprisingly shaky to me. I don't know, something's going on here. His aim isn't as crisp as usual. A little bit interesting. Edward, get wrecked. Couldn't he you have just had the last for the ace? I feel like that would have been appropriate. Yeah, that was very clean work from Edward. Edward is definitely not looking shaky. But Guardian's aim, just, just looking a little off. Just a little off. So we'll see. Now that he's got his AWP in hand, maybe this is what he was waiting for. He's done with the pistols, Anders. Done with the rifles. Just give him a sniper rifle. Let him go to work. He was hopping very well on this map um, the other day. So, so still, I think, uh, yeah, a good pickup for him. And the way that everyone else on Navi seems to be playing, I mean, especially Edward right now, but generally speaking, don't really, uh, don't really mind too much if Guardian is going to take a bit of a back seat. 
Or maybe he won't. Going to be very aggressive, it seems, down towards Toxic. And a quick round coming out of the terrorist side here. But Flamey's already shut down. One of these Molotovs are keeping them back. They can't really follow up. They really want to keep the pace up. But when they finally get in here, they're going to trade favorably. Seize going down as well to Roka. And Edward and Susa are left now two on three. Can they get a bomb down? That's a beautiful Molotov to force Edward forward. On the other side of the sandbags, flashing his way in and goes down to Roka. That's a great adjustment. Surprise. And now it's Zeus in a 1v3. He's still got that line, though, and it doesn't look like look like Echo Fox expects him to be there. Although it looks like he just got spotted. Roka must have seen his shoulder or something there because he instantly turned around. So element of surprise there. Well, <clears throat> Zeus had a moment where he had, he had the drop on Echo Fox. They didn't know that he was playing short, that he was there to back Edward. But that fades. Real, yeah, I mean... Edward as well, he was positioned in Sewers very early on to get a flank on Echo Fox. Echo Fox, luckily enough for them, they really just spotted everything this time. There was no them getting caught off guard by Edward with a flank or anything like that. It just looks like they, they managed to spot everything and then actually win the duels. Guardian not really able to bring that op into the fight as well. Which is kind of surprising. I think it was Shazam. No, not Shazam. Roka? They actually picked him off quickly enough as well. Yeah, Roka definitely uh, played a big role here. Oh, bit of a crazy fight coming out. And Edward, definitely very confident. Freakasoid, in fact, did not even hit him there. So, bit of a shame. That's going to put so much doubt in Echo Fox. I mean, they were kind of outside B anyway, but because they had to fall back, they have, Edward, we can tell, has fallen back on the map and isn't actually pushing, but Echo Fox don't know that, so they have to be constantly paranoid now about the idea that someone could be sneaking in behind them. Boost time. I like it. Shazam. Oh, lost the man. Attempts the wall bang. He gets to confirm as well. But he's not going to find the shot. That's so frustrating. And now Navi have good information to go off of. They know that there are two players there. Well, minus one now that Shazam takes a bullet to the face from Seized. But Navi, with that one spot, with that one boost, they're just like, ah, yeah, okay. Two guys waiting in source for us. That's good to go off of. And now they have a two-man advantage here going into the rest of this round with 45 seconds left on the clock. Zeus going to catch Roka looking the wrong way. Just too many angles for Roka to worry about there. And it's down to Rix and Sean Gares. Yeah, and Guardian, when he made that jump, actually saw that the door was open. So I'm wondering if he sort of called that up and said, there's at least a chance that someone's going to come up the stairwell here. They did finally win the fight against Edward, but you have to think it's too late. There is a s very slight chance if they take the fight to Edward here, that they could get the bomb down and sort of play a 2v3. But yeah, they if they wait too long and they are already sort of delaying a bit too much, it's not really going to happen. And Flamey just taking him out, no problem. Flamey just doesn't care, dude. He just sits there, out in the open. This is the initial fight from Edward, the pick to start things off versus Freakazoid. Freakazoid completely whiffing his shots. But Flamey, man, he's just like, you would think that he'd fall off the angle after spotting them at long. He's like, actually, no, I'm just going to sit here and get two headshots. And really, if you Echo Fox at that point, it's just, that's the most insanely frustrating situation where it's just like, right, he just crushed us straight up. We, couldn't, we didn't even have time to get our strat into play. He just took the fight to us. No respect. That's what Navi is all about right now versus Echo Fox here. Very, very good start. And continuously, the American side, just, they don't have money to buy enough. That's the problem, right? They're not, they're not getting rounds here where they keep getting bombs down, and at least they're, they're sort of bringing that home. So they are very, very low on economy at all times, it seems. Sneaking in, and look at how much of the map Navi's just given them. They don't care. Yeah, I'm curious to see if Echo Fox, when they have rifles in the next round, are going to try and go for another quick play, right? Edward somehow finds Roka. Oh, that was from on high. Okay, up in Sniper. Did get the spot. But I want to see Echo Fox continue to try and go for the, the quick pace pressure here, because as soon as Echo Fox starts to slow things down and go to default plays, I feel like they start, you know, Navi start getting in their heads, and they, they start playing it too slow, they start hesitating. I really do want Echo Fox to try and just play the confidence game, rush in there, try and battle with Navi, get it chaotic, get it messy. Ooh, Ricks, good refrag there, doing real damage right now, but he couldn't get the next one in. That would have been great. Instead, it's Edward just continuing like he did on uh, on Duke as well, and he just hasn't cooled off at all. It seems to be a very good day for him right now. And um, I think he's up to something like 14 kills. And we're just starting on the eighth round here. So, so far, that's something like two kills per round. Pretty good stuff. Yeah, no, he's, uh, he's, he's definitely starting off with that, that monster performance. 13-0-4. 6 1 lead for Navi on their CT side. And Echo Fox, they will go for the buy. It's it's a little bit, it's a cutting corners. Obviously, Roka sitting on the Deagle just so he can get some nades. Shazam with the Galil. So here we go. It looks like it's going to be a quick B split kind of play here coming in from Echo Fox. 
Two guys have now got control of sewers. They're going to have three outside of monster. They're going to be setting up for their nades here, Echo Fox. And they're just waiting. There we go. One minute 30, boom. The nades start to go out. And now it's just going to be a complete rush onto that B site. Very similar to us to what they tried to do in the pistol round. And see if it could be successful this time around. Flamey in a good position here, shooting over the flames. And very hard for them to see him in return. But Sean coming in. First two kills of this map for him. And very good uh, style there. Rick's going to be taking out Edward. And Guardian and Seuss are left two on three at the moment that bomb is not down yet in fact it's on the ramp only not being picked up and Zeus not a chance there against the Ricks and a triple kill for Sean Gares up until this point he had zero kills so that's a really big round for him absolutely and that's also a big round for Flamey Flamey's just got to be kicking himself like come on guys that was a beautiful spray from Flamey. He shuts down two players coming out from Monster. If it weren't for that quick play coming in from Sean, he would have potentially picked up a third one as well. So, I mean, Flamey does all the damage, and he gives his team the tools necessary to win, right? The man advantage going into the site. The bomb hasn't even been planted, and yet his, his teammates just drop the ball completely. So that's a bit of a messy round coming in from Navi, but that's what Echo Fox are looking for, right? That's, that's what I'm saying. Get in their face. Just take the fight to them. Don't, don't let the, the round run down too far. Don't overthink things. Just get in there. Take the action to Na'Vi. Make them respect you. And I mean, the one thing that they've also accomplished here, Echo Fox, is actually depleting almost all of Na'Vi's economy, which is really good. Um, if, they, if they win this round, then they're going to force the eco. Then we'll be looking at a 6-4 scoreline. And suddenly, um, things are looking a lot brighter. So... But this is the problem, I feel like, with Echo Fox. This happened on Nuke as well. It seems like every time they get into this position where, you know, ooh, there's an opening, there's a chance, there's a, a gap that they could try and exploit here, yeah, then they, they can't really make it through, and Na'Vi seem to, to be one step ahead. Well, the rotation is coming out from Guardian. He's getting back up onto the A site. Flamey and Zeus locking it down right now. It's Seized and Edward holding over on B. But currently three players here for Navi, ready and waiting for Echo Fox to push. And once again, Echo Fox running down that clock. 45 seconds left on this round as they set up for the execute. And through the smoke, just that's just an angle. That's just a Guardian knowing, right, if somebody's standing here along the wall, perfect. Puts the shot through. Freakazoid is dead. Echo Fox have lost their entry man, and well, the push begins. Well, that's a bit ridiculous. Guardian going to look for the kill there on Ricks. Shazam going down and Roka, the last man left. And just like that... Guardian and the rest go from having no money at all to uh, being in a just fine position. Yeah, and a big round from that man right there on your screen. Guardian, the first shot, that's just experience. The second one, though, blindingly fast. Just so quick when he wants to be Guardian. Because we'll, we'll get the shot through. Obviously, he's just lining it up right with the edge of the wall, right? Boop. Drops Freak. But the second one is just ludicrous. That's where Guardian, that's where really you get to see just how quick Guardian is. I think that first, uh, that first smoke shot is ridiculous, isn't it? That's what Bill O'Reilly would have said. You can't explain that. <laughs> you can't explain that. You can't explain that. <laughs> Trying for the flick, and um, actually I think he got like eight damage on Freakasaur. Oh, that was something else. It will be Seuss going uh, for the first shot there, and Roka getting back into the Deagle. I feel like Roka has more impact on these rounds with Deagles than with anything else. Right? When, he, when they went for the Force Bind, he's got the Deagle. I'm like, I'm fine with this. Wait a minute. Who was that peeking with the Tech Nine? That was Rix. Because Rix spotted Guardian, and then Roka still sort of ran into it. So Rix took a peek around the corner and said, no, it's clear. No problem. <laughs> Guardian is up there to take out his teammate. Eight to two. Not a big fan of Zeus's position there, considering it's, uh, they're up against pistols. So a little bit scary, you know, holding connector, holding close where you can get rushed down. Tech 9 range, that one shot, headshot, that's all it takes. But, I mean, well, his teammates from the site, they, they actually get those long range fights where the pistols are going to be rendered ineffective. And, well, we're looking at a pretty solid situation here for Na'Vi. Echo Fox, they ate the round of Eco. Now they call for the tactical pause. I like the timing. I mean, they're not, the situation isn't completely out of control just yet. They're going to have a buy round coming up. So now it comes down to Sean to like go to start crunching numbers or something in that computer brain of his to figure out what actually needs to happen here. Uh, I mean, the what's what's frustrating is again there is a sort of roadmap right now ahead of Echo Fox that they could use that they could exploit to to get back into the game and it, it still has to do with Navi's economy. Oh, I see the resemblance. Right, he's a beverage expert. Good stuff, good stuff. See, unfortunately for me, like, this is just going completely over my head. I have no idea what the reference is. Who is apparently it's a 30 rock reference. I apparently, um, I, who, have, who do we have hired who finds time to, to come up with these memes? That's what I want to know. I, um... Shout out to Alex. That's all we need to know. 
I wonder if, if that's going to be a real thing in like future, you know, esports production. You know, you could have like chief of memes or general meme meme manager. You know, someone who just tries to keep hold of hold the memes and when to use them at the right time. Meme coordinator. Meme coordinator. I mean, DreamHack used to do it for a while, right? Where yeah, but it has to be a real title. You know, someone who's who's a real meme lord. Oh man, I can't think of anybody in, who would be able to pull it off in the same way. There are a few people out there. Look, um, what, what I was trying to say is basically this, that Navi's economy is still not that good, and Equifox have enough money to buy. They, they, it's all the time just a question of getting the money back in here. Yeah. Like, if they can win this round and, and, and make Navi eco, Equifox still has a chance. I just don't think it'll happen. That's the problem. But the, 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 the road is sort of right there. The, the, the steps they need to take is right there, but they need to win consecutive rounds. Well, Starx, right now you can see him, the chief of Navi, the man calling the shots. Definitely on point right now. Definitely uh, doing a fantastic job coordinating his troops on the CT side. Echo Fox with the two rounds and the force buy. When you look at the Galil and the UMP here for Sean Gares. But three rifles, three AKs, good nade count. And Navi continue to put the pressure on. They're going to get up aggressive towards top mid. Guardian going to set up a flash for his teammate to peek. But instead, it's Echo Fox straight YOLO B rush. Let's go. I mean, it's worked a couple of times, maybe. It'll work again, seized right here, which is a position that they did models of last time, Echo Fox. And this time, they're going to jump right through Flamey, hiding on the other side. It's actually seized, and then Flamey coming through, and not the result that Echo Fox were hoping for, <laughs> not even a bomb plant. And Navi are just like, we were born with the Yolo B. I I mean, come on, CIS team, seriously, you never played matchmaking before? Yeah, they, I mean, it's also, I just feel like that, that Rush B strategy has, on this map in particular, has gone out of style quite a long time ago, like six, six months or more ago. Um, it's, it's very, very hard to, to get working well. And we, we've already seen one example of why that is. If, if one monitor lands well enough in the monster tunnel, mm -hmm. then half your team's running in and half of them are waiting on the other side. And what's the use in that, really? So 9, 2, and again. Right at the point where they could have forced an eco is exactly where Echo Fox can't get the round home. It's, it must be incredibly frustrating because at the end of it, and I'm not saying that, that you know, if they win those rounds, then maybe Echo Fox win the game or something like that, but you know, they're at the, the, that does sort of tip the balance between being completely crushed and, and at least getting to show what you could maybe do right. And, being competitive. Yeah, being competitive at least. Yeah, that's, uh, that is good to point out. I mean, it's, it felt the same way on Nuke as well. And so right now, Echo Fox just not quite able to do it. <laughs> Seized. They have wall bang headshot on Roka. Spots him going up the ladder. He's just putting some shots through, hoping to get lucky, and it works. Guardian, watching the top of the stairwell, will pick up Rix. And now, while well, Freakazoid is left to ponder his life, he's like, but who do I entry for now? My team is dead. And so now you have to be a lurker, Freak. That's what he's doing. <laughs> I... I wonder what is happening, because he, I think he's just realizing that there is no way out, and now we, they have uh, become extreme. Oh, 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 oh no! Are you mad? Because I'm not. The amount of disrespect. <laughs> <laughs> no way, and it's so fitting as well, because for some reason Freak always looks like you know he's he's given up on life in those sorts of situations, right? If you look into his eyes, the, all of the happiness is gone, and C's just showed him why. Look at how they're all laughing as well. Edward there with the grin. Oh my god. Get off the server. Navi, man. They are just, just monster balling these guys. 10 to 2. And now Echo Fox, after the round of Echo, now they do have the money to buy. Guardian once again going for the aggressive positioning in birthday. And he's just going to fall off, actually. It sets it up for Rick. Zeus and Edward going aggressive on long, and they get completely annihilated. There we go. Echo Fox, now they have a chance. Now, are they going to go and challenge Guardian on long? Because he, he plays this position so much on this map that uh, I think that would be a mistake. No reason to throw away the round to Guardian's AWP. Well, I mean, now all Navi need to do is just sit. Sit. I mean, at this point, it's a little bit out of, uh, out of hand. So, Guardian, if you can just sit, hold the long line into mid with that AWP. Seized and Flamey focusing on the B site instead. They're going to put all of their faith in Guardian right now to have an impact with this op and whittle down Echo Fox. As the clock ticks down, 50 seconds left in the round, Echo Fox start to move. And they start to make their move into mid. So this is where we could have that confrontation. 
If Guardian can find that one pick, turn it into a three on four, and Echo Fox aren't even on the site yet, things get interesting. We've already seen him do it uh, once over by Long here, where he picked up two people before they even got close. The only thing is they have so many grenades, so they should be able to zone him out. As long as they have the standard in this, the jump Guardian does see them, and Shazam has a pretty good idea. Really wanted that shot in there. And now the counter grenade should be coming out here. 15 seconds left. They need to get that bomb on. Guardian can actually shoot them through the box if they're not careful. That's a big worry, but he's going to go around the other side and ends up dying to the Molotov. Nine seconds, and the bomb will be planted. Yeah, and a very solid hold coming in here for Echo Fox. They neutralized Guardian. They did their jobs. Freakazoid with the double kill at the end saves Shazam's AWP. But this was the big play here from Rix. They, oh, they line up, right? One on top of the other. So Rix, just with the good spray control there, gets the job done. It's a real shame that people don't try and go for the, for the shots for the box more, because mm. it's not that hard. And again, if the reason it's not is because people always plan in one position on this map. Um, that, that default plan is like 95% of the time. In competitive play anyway. So, 14th round coming up here, and a 10-3 to scoreline. As a minimum, Echo Fox need 10-5. I don't think four rounds is enough here. Guardian? Somehow missing every single person, even though they look like they were lined up. And Shazam, this time with an AK, picking up a really good kill there. Guardian gonna go back for more, picks up Sean Gares, and he's back around the corner quick for a second kill, looking for a third. Gonna be a bit too much here. Roker with the one, and then the two, and then coming in with a third headshot. That's just almost unreal. And Ricks to close out the round on Seized. That looks a lot better. Yeah, now, now they're coming alive here. Roka in particular, three headshots like that, and that wasn't spray either. That sounded like burst fire, so complete control of the situation for him. Coming alive. I mean, he was sitting on five kills before that, so puts him up to a healthy eight. Finds Guardian to start things off. Spots out Edward. Edward loves to play on CT stairs like that, and yeah, just really solid control there from Roka, keeping his cool. So Zeus, that was just unfortunate with how it started out, with Zeus just kind of getting caught as the smoke went up. Guardian trying to force things. But we're in the 15th round. Navi, just enough money to get the rifles and nades. No AWP for Guardian, however. Echo Fox with four rounds. Go for the double AWP strat. And Sean, can he get the wall bang right? Just off on the angle. That's probably one of those things that you would have to have practiced beforehand to, to guess because mm -hmm. it's, it's very... Not very intuitive, and the problem is there are a lot of things in the way, so if you don't know exactly where you're shooting, you're not going to be hitting anything on the other side. Especially there's like a big metal beam up there that you can very easily hit, so you gotta, you got to be dead on. Yeah, you see, that's even what he's shooting through, so you can kind of tell that if you're, if you're off by a millisecond there or, or an inch, then it's not going to be working out. Flamey with a double kill and seized with one on Freakasoid. Great flashbang in, and actually, if he hadn't been out of bullets, then Rook would probably be dead too. Guaranteed 35 HP left on him. Oh, the nade. Perfect. Still does a bit of damage. Drops Roka down to 11 HP. Tanks up Shazam as well. But that bomb is dropped in sewers now. So life gets pretty difficult for Echo Fox. They have to find a way to walk into a potential crossfire here. And there's already a flank on the way as well. Zeus has the option to go into T-spawn if he wants. And so they could be pretty firmly boxed in. Shot attempt from Shazam. Edward pushing close. Flamey's got his back. And there we go. Point blank shot from Shazam. Beautiful. But it's still a man advantage here for Na'Vi. Shazam doing a lot of work right now. And somehow they actually do end up in a two-on-two. -two. The problem is there's only 10 seconds. And they can't really clear the whole bomb time at this point. And now the rogue has gone. Things are much worse. And that's going to be 11-4. Favoring Na'Vi. A very strong performance from them. And Echo Fox just... I don't know. They certainly tried a lot of different things, but... Now we just seem to be too solid on this map. I think that's what it boils down to. Yeah, in, in terms of indi individual skill, CT side, they're all going to be able to do their work. But then going into the T side, this is where Navi are really scary as well. Now, now we really get to see what that tactical mind of Starks is going to be able to put into play. And when you have heavy hitters like Guardian, like Seized, like Edward, who's hitting shots right now. Captain Abraham, you know, he showed up with the harpoon today. It's looking very good for Navi versus Echo Fox. We'll see if uh, after this short break. When we get into the second half, if Navi get a new fur coat.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We do have the second half of the second map coming up here between Echo Fox and Na'Vi. And uh, for the moment, things are looking a little bit rough for uh, Echo Fox. Even it's worse true. than it was on Train, it seemed. Or not on Train, on Nuke. It's true, but the hunt for the Meme Lord was brief, Anders. Gotta oh, get yeah. the stitch from HLTV. With those comments on the pictures, come on, man. Of course that guy, he's made for it. That's a good point, actually. Maybe we could uh, hire him in the future. We do have Edward and Rix here matched, matched up against each other. Um, I mean, I guess this is the show's a lot, right? Rix did the best job that he could on Echo Fox, and he got 10 kills to the 18 of Edward. So that does say quite a bit. And um, I mean, again, Sean, not to sort of, not to sort of judge him too harshly, because I, I have a lot of love for Sean, but he had the uh, three kills in one round, and outside of that, he got one other kill in 15 rounds. So basically, there were only two rounds where Sean got kills in, and that's obviously a big problem here. Good shot from Shazam, though. Going to take care of Edward. Always a player you want to get rid of in a pistol round. Absolutely. One of the better pistol players right now, Guardian. And Flamey kind of pinned down in playground over here. Freakazoid trying to press forward, and he's looking for the shots on a Flamey, but he gets caught in the crossfire. Sean Garris takes out Seized, and this is just chaos. But in the end, when the dust settles, it looks like Na'Vi will have the man advantage. They have the bomb control as well. And it's all on Sean now in a 1v2 situation. So you called him out, Anders. T usually, when you end up calling somebody out, they hit this next level and actually deliver in the round. So let's see if it holds true. Well, he's got the one kill. But the problem is they know where he is. And they're in a two-on-one and they have the bomb. So Sean actually pretty quick with the rotation right now. They both have armor, which is a real shame because he has an HE grenade. And if they didn't have armor, he could... Uh, Chuck it in there and do a lot of damage. Now they've double faked him and are running back into the A-bomb site. And Sean kind of almost just has to wait and see until they show themselves. What was strange about this round is that Echo Fox actually got the opening frag there and then they, they just kept fighting. They just they they actually ran all the way into the playground to uh to look for kills. This is gonna be painful for Sean though. He's hoping to catch him off guard. 30 seconds left here. Bomb is going to get planted on the A site. He's going to realize instantly, of course. And so now, yep, just starts running right through connector. You got to get up onto that site as quickly as possible now because you don't have that kit picked up. You only have that HE to work with. Yeah, and I'd say run, run all the way. Just ch charge in here. This, this walking stuff is never going to work. So you just have to, to hope that this is one of those games where you charge in and get headshots and nothing else because otherwise you're going to spend all your time looking for, uh, for stuff here. Grenade reigns in, and again, he just has to run and take these fights. He can't play this game, and it's actually already too late. Gonna end up going down, triple kill for Guardian there, and that will be kind of almost the final nail in the coffin, I think. Yeah, what's un what's incredible is that, yeah, Freakazoid, unfortunately for him, he wasn't able to get the kill on Flamey, but Guardian, man, he was the anchor player here over in Playground. With that P250, it seems like the go-to strategy now for Na'Vi as well, to just put P250 Kevlar on Guardian and let him go to work. He just con he's consistently delivered with that strategy as well, so it makes sense for Navi to keep going back to it. Uh, Navi holding consistent as well with their new strat, which is basically to get the rifles, and then like just if they get an SMG, it's a UMP. They aren't messing around with the Mac 10 at all. They seem to really favor getting the rifles as quickly as possible in the second round. And I mean on Echo Fox, we had the double scout, which is kind of nice. They they obviously have to turn this around immediately if it's ever going to happen three men stacked down at b and shazam and sean playing very far apart but somewhere in the a side there good little jump scout shot coming out if he tries again it could be lethal though they're setting up on the other side and this scout is only really effective at long range when they get closer they're gonna have a pretty big advantage and sean really trying his best right now shazam no longer on the server that grenade gonna take care of him yeah not so lucky there's a molotov point blank and flamey decides to challenge and so it's Freakazoid, Roka, and Rix, the last three alive here in a three-on-five retake on the A site. Bomb about to get planted. And while they have to make the decision, Freakazoid continues to be effective with the 5-7. He finds another headshot here, takes out Seized. And Edward and Guardian are both very low, so there's still a chance here for Echo Fox. But Zeus will find a wallbang shot onto Rix somehow. Now it's Roka with the Deagle. He's been hitting headshots all day long while well, past couple of days. He always seems to find something, but not this time. Flamey is there. And well, that's pretty much it. I mean, it's as clean cut as it gets. Navi. No fear. Showing no fear either, really. They just decide, actually, you know, we're going to walk onto this A site. And it's the, it, was, it was the same on Nuke. This time around, though, it just doesn't really work out for, um, for Echo Fox. Navi really seemed to be stubborn, right? They're just like, right, this is what the bomb site we're going to. There's nothing you can actually do to stop us. Even if you have a scout or a stack or whatever, we're still just going to walk out here. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I think they, they do feel very confident. And Echo Fox, I think, are also slightly 
slightly sort of mentally beat at this point. And I think it's hard to give any motivational speeches or anything like that to say, hey, we're going to come back in here. They're just in a very tough position. And it's no surprise, Navi, they're one of the best teams in the world. It just hasn't looked like that the first couple of days. But right now, they are they're sort of playing up to that level, I would say. And um, that it's this is how it should be if now Navi play Echo Fox. Oh, please. Guardio with the quad kill and the anti-eco. Very nearly an ace with a smoke. Just looked like he was practically tracking Shazam through that. There is balance on Na'Vi though, right? Because CT side, third round. Edward nearly gets an ace, anti-eco. Kills four players over at long. This time it's Guardian over towards B. So 14 to four, a 10 round lead for Na'Vi on their T side here versus Echo Fox. And this is the first round in the 19th round that they'll be able to afford to buy. So we have the rifles. Handful of nades to work with here. No kits and no helmet. So really just skimping as much as possible here. Echo Fox have as much utility to work with as possible. And they do get the nade right. Blocking off monster. Broke up full flash though. And this is just it. nothing was working. Nothing is working. Ricks caught with the nade in his hand. Seized with a double entry. A little bit too quick. And here's the problem. Seuss is covering this angle that Sean is coming in from. And Freakasoid 2 is right there. So if they did try for a retake... It would lose them the rifles and pretty much lose them everything else as well. Bomb is going to be going down and Echo Fox see what they could do here. Sean caught on the stairwell. Going to end up going down. And this is just a horrible turn of events here once again. We are going to be at map point for Na'Vi and I guess also match point. They did already win on Nuke. Mm -hmm. Match point and a very quick clean 2-0 finish here for Na'Vi if this all pans out. Shazam wins his duel versus C, so that's good on him. Making it a little bit more expensive here for Na'Vi. So a man advantage now for Na'Vi. Bomb is ticking, and it's pretty much going to go boom in just a couple seconds. So Freakazoid, he's clever. He's going to be able to get out of this in one piece, it looks like. Zeus may not be able to find him, should not be able to. And so two rifles saved here for Echo Fox. That's actually pretty solid. Although, although Zeus is on the other side of the wall. Okay. And they both live, just in case you were wondering. And this move from Seized and the run through the Molotov, even though it was kind of fading, it's still pretty good because if there was a third man in there on the other side, he probably wouldn't have been counting on that timing, right? Mm. And especially now that I'm assuming we're playing with the sort of instant fade to black, it means they can't even tell each other, you know, uh, that, oh, he's actually continuing through the Molotov. That's not going to be information you can give out, so... 15 to 4, and the 20th round coming up, and there, there just isn't much to talk about from Echo Fox's point of view. They... They haven't done enough for us to, uh, to sort of say anything. Good little spam from Na'Vi. That's a, that actually is a position that some players like to play in that corner through the smoke. Timing works out perfectly for Shazam, though. He's able to back off into restrooms just in the nick of time before C's pre-fired that angle. So Echo Fox, can they weather the storm? We're about to find out. Shazam holds his ground, takes down C's. Edward, however, is going to flank Sean Garrett. Zeus with the drive-by on Shazam, though. And once again, man advantage for Na'Vi. Zeus is even going to be here to cut off the rotation if he wants. And this is just nasty for Echo Fox. There's no saving now, boys. You got to get in here and you got to get the job done. At least you have three kits, so you have a little bit of time to work with. I'd say, I think they should save, actually. Just don't give Na'Vi the extra kills. It's not worth it. They're obviously not going to win this retake. Here. Shadow being shown. And it will be Rix to take one out, but Zeus with the one kill. Looking for a triple. See if he can take out Rix at the end. One on two still. And there is just almost no time for this to work out. That Molotov as well, forcing him to use the smoke, so he can't use that to defuse either. And a Molotov raining out. Clock is simply run too far down. And there will be 16-4 in favor of Na'Vi. Just a very, very one-sided matchup here. I think one of the most one-sided matches we've had, and uh, maybe in, uh, in this group so far. 22 kills on Edward, 21 on Guardian. And um, a really, really rough day there. But good news for the Na'Vi fan in the crowd there. Yeah, absolutely. I mean... It's tough to say because you did see like glimmers of hope for uh, Echo Fox on Nuke, but you know, Overpass is just, Na'Vi are just so good, head and shoulders above most of the world, really. I mean, there's yeah. no shame in losing to Na'Vi on Overpass. It's their playground. You really have to do your homework if you want to try and take a fight versus Na'Vi on that map. And it's as simple as that. So Na'Vi with a quick clean 2-0, and they will be going on to play on TBS tomorrow night. 10 p.m. EST in the finals of this group, and it's a it's a spot on the at the playoffs basically that will be on the line as well as some dough. So it's so important for Navi to keep up this form. We'll be finding out who will meet them there tomorrow, though. The next match is going to be between Flipside and Mouse Sports.
Yes, welcome back to E-League, and you can see Na'Vi have got the job done, barely broke a sweat. We've got our audience coming in, so they uh, did get to see that last map. There's one Na'Vi fan in the front there with a pretty big flag. I hope he hasn't come all the way from the Ukraine. Uh, but uh, if he did, he wouldn't have been disappointed. A uh, very comfortable performance there over Echo Fox. So let's start by talking about Na'Vi. I mean, this is that was, that was just clinical. Uh, this is and the, this is now the thing where they don't need Guardian to have this explosion, at least in this group stage of this of this uh, portion of the league. Um, they'll probably need them for playoffs, but right now everyone's just playing at such a good level that, you know, across the board they can all just do their job. No, none of them have to really go nuts or explode um, against the weaker competition, and they just played within that system they've had established, and it was easy, I guess would be the best way to describe it. Mm. Yeah, I mean, the sheer number of setups Navi has on this map is mind-boggling. Like, real setups as well, where if one guy moves to an advanced position, he has another person covering an angle, and they just rotate them all so well that if you're the terrorist, I don't know how you're supposed to read that. I mean, it doesn't matter what demo you've watched, you're never going to know when they're doing that particular setup. So this was beyond clinical. I mean, there's nothing the Echo Fox guys could do. Yeah, and, and you know, I, we'll talk about it a little bit more. I, I think Echo Fox might kind of regret uh, some of the, the opportunities they yeah, had. Yeah, picking up some of those players, I mean, what would it be? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I meant about what could have oh, been, okay. because it could have been a very different outcome for them. Nobody wants to face Na'Vi when they get rolling. Anyway, uh, we have, of course, got, of course, got Chris Puckett. That's a mouthful. I might change that one. Uh, he's interviewing their star sniper, Guardian. All right, thank you very much, Richard. I am here with the winner. We have Guardian, who is advancing, of course, to play on TV tomorrow night. First of all, how do you feel the team is playing right now? You're coming in as a top three team in the world. How good is this team right now? Uh, well, I would say we are not good enough to win the major, but we are getting back to our form, so it will take some time before the major to come back, but we are starting to play better and better. But yeah, if I compare today and the, and the first day, it's, it's much, much better. Well, speaking about the Major, we know last Major, I asked everybody, who is the best sniper on the planet? All of them said Guardian. You had some injuries, you're coming off of those injuries now. Are you back to 100%? Uh, well, I feel good, but I, I think I'm missing some confidence, and I'm not hitting all my shots, but I think if I will practice good, uh, enough hours and much more than I did before this event, then I think I can come back, but still, I, I, I wouldn't say I'm the best. There are much better snipers, I would say, in, in different roles, so yeah, we'll see. Well, we'll see how you snipe tomorrow. Of course, that's the big night. Tomorrow, you're going to play uh, at 10 o'clock against either Malsports or Flipside. Those two teams are setting up on the main stage next. Who would you rather play on live TV? Uh, well, I would like to play Flipside just because they're a CIS team. So for CIS region, it would be great. But yeah, it's 50-50 game, so we'll see. But I would say Flipside. All right, he wants to play Flipside. We'll see if it happens. They have to get through Malsports. But first, let's break down this series as we send it back to the desk. Yeah, thanks a lot for that, Chris. And, and while Guardian did perform very well, we, we did say one of the things that is frightening about Na'Vi is he can be absent and they can still comfortably win a game. That is typified by our blazing hot player of the match as presented by Buffalo Wild Wings. We've gone for Edward. It was an easy choice in the end. Yeah, much like last night, we, we just we were just starting to see this out of Edward, this level he's hitting. And we, we mentioned yesterday his style is just, you know, it's never going to be this uh, awe-inspiring, shocking, you know, highlight clips. It's just very calm, collected player. I mean, they're just smooth. Uh, he just does his role. He stays within himself and just quietly racks up the kills. And then all of a sudden you look up and, and he's at the top of the scoreboard. Uh, and this was a very good performance. And look at the ADR. I mean, that, that's overpass, obviously, over 100 is, is nuts, but 99 on the first map as well. Um, and, and efficient, almost two to one ratios on, on both these maps. Duncan, obviously, you followed this guy a long, long time. Sure, he yeah. has a lot of pedigree. Uh, would you say he's having a renaissance in his career right now? Yeah, but as a different type of player, that's what's so interesting. Because yeah. in the old Na'Vi, when they were the best team in the world, he was relied upon as the chief rifler. I mean, Markov was obviously a fantastic opler, but Edward was the guy where he, he had incredible spray. He really would show off his aim every game. That, that's how he would dominate these fights and with the fantastic aim duels. Very different player now. He's another player who's had to move toward the cerebral role. You saw from the clips. He doesn't do some amazing, like, one spray that kills three people with a bunch of headshots, like Seized Might. He doesn't have the, the crazy flick shots, like a, a shocks or something. It just grinds you down, you know. He's a guy where he's just going to choose the right spots. Also, you notice, wherever you see him, his reactions to getting kills or getting killed, he's incredibly hard to read. So what I take from that is I think he's a guy like a Crims where he's just very even keeled, you know, in terms of confidence. You know, he just approaches it round by round in the game. Doesn't get too up when he gets the kills. Doesn't get too down when he's not in the game. And so as a result, 
he's always going to give you kind of a consistent performance, mm. I feel. Doesn't really show any emotions in general. Yeah, he doesn't really, does yeah. he? Like uh, you off, off camera. Yeah. <laughs> I ask for a hug, never get one. <laughs> yeah, uh, but he, that is true. Moses is a bit cold. Yes, I am the one emotionally had, stamped had, out. It's had some bad experience. Some, yeah. so, uh, so anyway, let's talk <laughs> a little bit about Echo Fox. Just because North America's let you down so much. Let's talk a little bit about Echo Fox. Why not? I think that we'll regret this, what happened, because obviously all they had to do on that second map against Flipside was get six rounds. They don't. Only yeah. got two. And they started and they, CT, yeah. Yeah, and, and they wouldn't have been playing Na'Vi. Yeah. And, and conceivably, had, would have had a much better chance of getting on the TV. And, you know, I, I know they're quite uh, relaxed guys, but, but I honestly think they had a real chance here of, of upsetting the odds. And to finish bottom in this group, they're probably a bit, uh, a bit upset because two players didn't really turn up. And it was only Shazam, for me, who over-delivered. Well, he, he did deliver on the week, didn't deliver in this no. series. Um, and the big thing is, even on that second map, they, they have four players sitting in 50 ADR. Like, they're just not, there's no, there's no output there. There's, there's nothing coming from yeah. this team. Yeah. And you can see there as well, you know, the Wednesday to Thursday transition just, you know, even, even Shazam wasn't up to, uh, up to par, up to his usual standard. And of course, by finishing bottom of the group as well, I mean, you know, we, we can say safely to, uh, they're out of the tournament now. There's no opportunity to get into that last chance qualifier. And I think for an emerging brand, it's a real, real shame. Well, what's it, what, what, what do you say? There's always season two? We mentioned, I think, that, that there is always season two. There is always season yeah. two. I, I don't know. The, here's the thing. We didn't really expect too much out of them. And, and we, we talked about, I mean, the big thing coming into Summer this. Summer aside, of course. So, yeah, everyone went summer. And, uh, yeah. The big thing is, uh, coming into this, we knew that the tactical part was going to be their strength. With Sean behind the helm, he's the, he's at, 